Okay, so we have a few things. So we're going to talk about DPS and healer comp first of all. Tank comp absolutely does not matter uh, on this fight whatsoever. This is DPS that are good. Again, you can do this with any comp, and I'll kind of talk about healing during this too, because DPS and healing are kind of like the same here in a way. Um, DPS classes that are good. Moonkins are insane. Windwalkers are great for passive cleave. Hunters, wild spirits comes up like they're really a strong two minute at multiple times in this fight. It also helps clear up the waiters when they get in. Havoc DH is actually really good too because darkness is actually one of the very, this is one of the best situations for darkness. It almost never comes up where darkness is as good as it is on this fight. You know, darkness is typically never really strong on massive hits, but when there's a ton of damage events, which i.e. Da jumping dancing fever while you have oppressive atmosphere dots, while you're getting food thrown at you by the waiters, right? It's just the amount it reduces is just so valuable. Like if you have an AMZ and a barrier on top of each other, those don't like add up obviously, right? Because then you can just drop, you know, four like damage reduction cooldowns and have 100% damage reduction. That's not how that works at DRs, right? But because uh, darkness reduces cooldowns in a different way than just a flat damage reduction by giving you a chance to miss, it actually is much more valuable stacked on top of other cooldowns. And this is a fight where you stack a bunch of stuff. I mean, you can see it for yourself without even looking at logs. Jump five Dancing Fevers with an AMZ and a Barrier down, and jump five Dancing Fevers with AMZ and a Darkness down, right? It's noticeably better. Uh, but again, specifically when there's just enough damage events where it counts. So those classes, again, most classes are fine. I'll give you, I'll show you what Moonkins are really, really good for, just in general. So like removing these waiters here, uh, Dutiful Attendants will spawn. I don't know if they have a Dutiful Attendant thing on here, but we'll just do, we'll make a little baby Nicholas. We'll turn him into a Dutiful Attendant, all right? So little tiny baby Nicholas is going to spawn back here and run towards the boss, right? Why Moonkins are valuable, and we'll talk more about Dutiful Attendants later, but why Moonkins are valuable is they can, the first one of the fight, which a lot of guilds actually struggle beating that second Dancing Fever before they push, or beating the Attendant before you push. Uh, if you go back here on your opener, like I think it's like four or five seconds in, if you convoke out of range of the bosses, the only thing in range of you will be the Attendant. Sometimes it'll spawn over here, in which case you can still do it over here. It takes a little bit of practice, but um, it really, really helps, and I'll kind of show it when I walk through the VOD later. Moonkin, Moonkin, very strong. Again, they're also Starfall for spread out waiters. They're just in general, like kind of really insanely good class for, in general, but also for this. Uh, for four or five healers, I honestly think it depends on your guild strengths. Uh, for, for me, I feel like if you have four really, really good healers, similar to Sludgefist, I think this fight is actually a better four heal. Only if you're very, very confident in the in your healers, the four of them specifically, and if their classes are good. Uh, a lot of fights, you can use different healers and it kind of doesn't matter. This fight is definitely not like that. This this fight is a fight where, you know, having something that doesn't have a raid cooldown massively affects you because this fight just has tons of damage and burst windows. Like I, I know a lot of people are like, oh, that's it for every fight. It's really not. It's really not. Uh, you, you can, you can you know, you can get by with almost every boss in this raid besides like two of them. And this is one of them where having actual CDs really helps. So obviously shamans. Uh, obviously Disc Priest. Specifically, one Disc Priest on this fight is great. If you run a second, honestly, Holy might be a little better. You can double Spirit Shell the second and third Dancing Fever of every, like, phase, kinda. I know it's, like, hard to put this fight into phases, but, like, it's really bad to double Spirit Shell on the first one, though, and they happen every minute, so it's like, if you offset it, it doesn't really work, and you're wasting it if you use it on the first one, so so Holy's fine if you, if you have one Disc already, but one Disc, this might be the fight where having one Disc in the entire raid is maybe the most valuable of any other boss. And then obviously Paladin. Uh, Paladin, less so. I think Ashen really carries for certain parts of this fight, but I don't know if Kyrian would be as good. But I mean, obviously, it's like usually the Paladin you bring to the raid. But really, you know, I, I four healed this with a Holy Priest working with another guild. You know, you can make it work, obviously. It's just kind of depends on what you have. Also, the other class that's really good uh, for DPS uh, without needing to be said is DK. DK gives you waiter grips, which we'll go over later, which are like kind of invaluable for how much damage you take in the fight. They also bring AMZ. Uh, two DKs can almost cover every single Dancing Fever, not quite, depending on the third one's timing and the dance right after it. Uh, it's usually three is what you'd want, but obviously not every guild has that. So I will I will show you a little bit later how to deal with uh, waiters if you don't have a lot of grips. And I still think this is the best strat to do, you know, and again, I'll talk about it later, but I think the general idea of doing free to last is, well, it's easier on your tanks. Um, and you don't have to deal with waiters. I'm going to show you to the best of my ability. I still think this is the best strat to do. If your tanks struggle with kiting, just kill every single ad. It's very doable. I've done it in multiple different guilds uh, with four and five heal, and you still meet the damage checks, and you bas basically make it a joke for your tank. Um, then on top of that, I think there's a ton of movement that a lot of people need to learn on Frida, which I don't think is good. Again, I'll show, show that later. Okay, so... That's basically the thing for comp. I'm trying to think if I have anything else. Chad, do you have anything else that is really important here, uh, comp-wise specific, before I get into how to deal individually with like waiters, attendants, dark recital, stuff like that? Fourth heal, Mistweaver, or Resto Druid? 
Uh, fourth heal, ideally, unfortunately, is probably a second shaman or a second paladin for just raid CDs. However, I, I, I you, you could have it be any other class. And, and, and I would go as far as to say, if you have a couple of classes that don't have damage reduction cooldowns, which is totally fine, by the way, like if you have two Restor Druids or Restor Druid and a Mistweaver or like a Holy Dr Priest and a Restor Druid, I would recommend just five healing just because that fifth healer is most likely going to bring you another damage reduction cooldown and you can kill it easily with both. I would only four heal if you're very confident in your four healers and you feel like you already have enough damage reduction cooldowns. I don't know exactly how many you need, but all right. But yeah. uh, so let's go to the first thing. So I actually want to talk about waiters basically straight away. Um, this is just how to deal with waiters and nothing else. I'm actually going to show a VOD of mine. So generally speaking, they spawn here before I show the VOD. Let's say the entire raid is stacked up here, which is a general stack point. I, I think it's five or six waiters that spawn every single time. I'm not quite sure, uh, but I know one spawns here, one spawns here, two spawn in front. But I think there's like a fifth one or a sixth one. Maybe they like spawn on the back. I'm not really sure, but they kind of just group themselves up. Uh, there's a couple strats you can use. You can use the Brewmaster, and a Brewmaster, if you guys are close enough, can actually drop his statue right here, and then all these little dudes will go to it. They're going to reset at the end of every phase, so you have to redo it or just kill them then, but they kind of stack themselves up, so you can like burst them down right after a phase if you want to. So the Brewmaster strat's nice. A couple of guilds use it. It's definitely not necessary. Let's just say like they spawn normally. If you have DKs at all, and specifically if you have a Blood DK, I think this is the best fight in the raid to actually have the Grip Legendary. The Grip Legendary works for D DPS DK, but it's not valuable enough since they have a longer Grip CD. A Blood DK with the Grip Legendary alone, so one tank can grip two adds every 15 seconds. Almost solos the entire mechanic. You, you basically don't need any DPS DKs if your uh, Blood DK runs that, and your Blood DK certainly on this fight does not need any other Legendary to survive. In the last phase, obviously, assuming you don't have him kiting or tanking the ad, which don't have your blood DK tank the ad. I mean, it's fine, but, like, don't do that. <laughs> uh, so you have waiter spawn. Now, a couple things happen in this fight that I think, here's how you would deal with this without Death Knights, okay? So one thing is, when Dark Recitals aren't happening, I think it's really easy for classes like Moonkins to go out and Typhoon adds in. It's really easy for, like, a Moonkin to go out and say, hey, little Disc Priest friend, and he's like, hey! And then he's like, and he's like, use Shining Force on me. And he's like, okay. And then he bounces two of these little waiters like into the group, right? So like that can happen. Uh, you can do stuff like that. Again, I would not recommend doing that around Dark Recital, but outside of it, I think you can do that. A lot of people stay stationary in this fight, but you actually have a lot of space where you can move. So there's that. If you are doing grips, I recommend gripping in these ones first, because what happens is you're going to get a uh, this to happen, right? So sometimes in this fight, you get uh, weird Waltz of Bloods to happen. And what happens during Waltz of Bloods, so they grip this back waiter in, but a lot, if, let's just assume you don't have grips, okay? You do this Dark Recital, just like we're doing here, and then you're killing the Attendant, right? And then right after the Attendant, Waltz of Blood comes down. So what happens sometimes is Waltz of Blood really screws you in the front of the room. So a lot of groups get in a habit of moving to the middle, right? So you can actually move yourself to the middle on purpose, and here's why you would do it. If you don't have a lot of grips or a lot of waiter damage still doing this strat, what you can do is simply just move your raid to the middle and avoid the dancers. Let's say they're even in... I mean, obviously right there we had to move, but you can do it even when you don't literally have to. And what happens if you don't have grips is right here there's going to be like four waiters stacked up that have been trying to get in range of you for like 30 seconds, and you were too far away, and you can just AoE them down here. So a general idea of bouncing back and forth between the front of the room when these two spawn and letting them group up, you kill them, right, with the bosses. And then by that time, there will be some back here. And you can actually move the boss, assuming a Dark Recital is not coming out. Uh, and these things will be kind of all stacked up. And then you can move the bosses and the entire raid back onto these, AOE them, and get rid of them, right? So using, if you are a, with a noticeable lack of waiter damage, you can actually, you know, move yourself back and move yourself across the room at the correct times. Again, your raid leader will probably tell you and you'll end up uh, getting rid of them a lot easier than you'd think. There's also one thing that I will, in my boss walkthrough later, I will show you, but there is a weird timing you can get where you will spawn double waiters in the last phase. That's why I suggest doing this. So if you guys notice at this time in the video here, this is right after the second dance, right? If you have two DKs with A-bomb's limb, I recommend having one of them use it right here to get up any remaining waiters, correct? And then I want the other one to actually save it for, uh, for the correct thing here. And that'll kind of tie us into our next topic, which will be like damage, damage CDs, right? Generally speaking, there's like two ways to use your CDs in this fight. Early and often is always like a good mantra, but here you can actually get some weird things. So I think it's dreads. Oh yeah. So if you're going a little bit slower than our main raid did, if you get these servants in 18 seconds, that's when you get the double set. A lot of people view it as a bug. It's actually not a bug because what happens is when you go to Nicholas's last phase, he immediately cast it again. Uh, and I'll show you that in a second. Uh, but we push it in time, so it doesn't matter. We beat every important thing, right? So we we kill we kill that attendant as it comes in, right? 
but like he he's going to cast Dredger, Dredger Servants in three seconds. So that's why you get the double wave. That's what you really want to try to beat that. It's actually maybe the single main benefit of four healing versus five healing is beating that every time. So we'll, we'll go over that more in the boss walkthrough later. But that's generally how we deal with attendance. Uh, for damage cooldowns on this fight, uh, generally early and often, I think if you use two minutes, you end up using it on the pull after the first dance, a little bit after. I don't think it's up right away. And then you get another use in before the second dance. And then after the second dance, your two minutes are up. And at that point in the fight, you need to have yourself be aware of what's actually important to you. So I think once we're used to it, our guild has like at least four or five people use two minutes after the second dance just to get an extra use. But if you're progressing on the fight, I would actually recommend holding your two minute cooldowns right here. I'll back up a little bit. I would recommend holding your two minute cooldowns that are up right out of this and slowly kill Stavros to zero. Again, you might get double Dredger Servants, but what it'll allow you to do is easily kill this first ad that comes out when Nicholas is here, and it allows you to push in time, uh, seeing as this is just a much harder part of the fight. Uh, you can kind of allow the haste buff you get after this dance to carry you, uh, rather than, you know, have to stack your CDs with it. Again, again, if you're a DPS player and farm, for sure, just let it rip, but killing it for the first time, if you use your two minutes here, you usually get two uses in the final phase, which is generally speaking the hardest part, right? So... That is how I think damage cooldowns should be handled. I will be going through the healer cooldowns during the actual walkthrough of the fight later, and I'll explain to you why I improvise all of them, and I almost never have them set. The only thing I set is uh, three specific cooldowns, and I save. if you have extra, I actually never rip them just to get them on cooldown, and I save them in case things go wrong. And I'll kind of explain to you my thought process behind that. Dark Recital is really easy, so if I go back, I can actually just show you the uh, bot here. Dark Recital, everyone uses the same weak aura. It's handled the same way. It's the easiest way to deal with it. I'll just back up. Uh, one thing I will say for this, very important, be nice to your melee. Uh, you don't need to run full speed. You don't need to stutter step. Or sorry, you, you you want to stutter step. You don't run full speed. And if you're a range, just pretend like you're a melee. A melee doesn't want to be like worrying about the range like a million years away from the boss. You should be meleeing the boss or meleeing something the entire time like I'm, like I'm doing here. Just stay with your partner. Like this guy out here, be a melee. You know, be nice to them. Melee does not want to be sitting off the boss the entire Dark Recital. Position yourself accordingly. If you notice what we do too, right when we get it, uh, like we're all stacked here. And as soon as it goes out, this group moves to the left for a second. And because they know the melee is going to do it, you'll notice them move like kind of back to the right when the boss comes back in. You see them moving back to the right. That gives us room to still hit the boss and not worrying about killing people. Not, not too much to talk about there other than uh, tanks specifically. Uh, boss movement in this fight is like kind of paramount. A lot of people decide to keep him still, but there's a lot of times where you do want to move the boss. You want to move the boss to cleave waiters better. You want to move the boss to uh, kite dutiful attendance, which will be one of the next things we talk about. You don't actually need to stay still unless a dark recital is happening or like happening in five seconds. You can kind of move the boss wherever to cleave ads. All right, now we're going to talk about evasive lunch. One of the things that I think is messed up the most from tanks, in fact, in almost every pug I've ever been in and casual guild I've ever helped, their tanks do this. Okay, I'm going to remove everything here. Here's their tanks do. Their tanks have Stavros. So let's just pretend every other boss doesn't exist right now. They're tanking the boss here. And they're like, all right, entire raid. Make sure you guys are on the left and right. So, so you don't get hit by the evasive lunch. Stop. That's fucking bad. That is the exact opposite of what you ever want to do in raiding. That's making your job easier for one player instead of the entire raid. Because uh, basically what happens is it goes behind the tank and charges where he's facing. So what happens in this scenario is the boss is going behind the tank where he's faced right now, and he's charging through him, which would hit every single person if they were in the raid over here, right? Okay, bad tank shit. Never do that. It is not on the raid to dodge that ability. It is on the tank, and here's why. What's better, having 19 other people have to worry about dodging this mechanic every single time, or one person just doing one thing? You know what that one thing is? Doing this, turning to the side, or maybe even hop back and turn to the side, because then what's going to happen is little baby Stavros is going to charge behind you and go this way and hit absolutely fucking no one. And it just, it just nothing else to say, do that. It's, it, it is, it is really, really hard to watch when people don't do that and then blame other people for it uh, going off. So just uh, play the game right. All right, that's enough of that. Next is Dutiful Attendant. I can probably find a VOD of them doing it. Generally speaking, Dutiful Attendance is something you want to kite the boss away from it. There's always a ton of incidental damage. Melee don't actually swap until it gets in. This is also the opener one too, right? So uh, the dutiful attendant that spawns on the opener gets blasted by the moonkins. I don't know if our moonkins actually do it. Because like we didn't do it in progression because they were Kyrian. But I've told them about it. Let's see if they do it. I don't remember. Okay, so they do. Oh yeah, see that moonkin going back? 
So he still has all the CDs up. He has CA, and just as soon as the attendant spawns, he just rips a convoke and kills it. And it basically kills it before he even gets to the raid. If you guys look at the attendant coming in behind here, look at that. It's already dead. Just from one moon can doing that. It massively helps get this push. A lot of people, a lot of guilds wipe to this push right here, and it's because of the uh it's because their moonkins don't do that. It's actually like a hard carry. What you want to beat here is the dancing fever. It's obviously easy for us to beat it, but some people really struggle with it. You actually even want to beat this attendant that's coming up too. Huge damage. This is also our main raid, right? Like someone progressing on this boss isn't going to be doing that much damage. But generally the idea is this. You wanna you want to have the boss here, right? Just forget everyone else. Let's just say Stavros is the only boss alive. And a dutiful attendant spawns, which I think we figured out earlier is just little baby tiny Nicholas over here, right? He spawns and he's like, oh, I'm going to shield you. Okay, what you can do, again, if Dark Recital is happening or about to happen in like five seconds, don't do this to not trick your uh, people from moving, right? Because like right here, if you move the boss and Dark Recital is about to happen, realistically, your ranged are going to stay here and your melee are going to follow. And then like the Dark Recital is going to be like a huge fucking mess, right? So if Dark Recital is happening, keep the boss still. If it's not, kite the fucking boss away from the dutiful attendant. He is so stupid. He will like get close to the boss and be like, oh, I want to cast. And then you're like, nope, just kidding. And he's like, he gets here and he's like, oh, I want to cast. And what'll happen is he'll start casting on the boss like 30 or 20% and you gain a shitload of boss damage from it. Uh, so as long as your group is used to it, it's kind of on the tanks, but you know, whatever boss you have out, if you can kite it away from the attendant, um, you, it's only good. It act it's actually like low key, a very good DPS increase, right? So just whatever you can do there again, during dark recital, or if it's going to happen in five to 10 seconds, do not move the boss. But if it's not, freely move the boss around. I, I think one thing that tanks do in this fight in general is uh, they just decide not to uh, kite the boss and just move around. There's no reason not to. All right, so last thing we're going to talk about is how to deal with the ads at the end of the fight. One of the two reasons people have even attempted to not do Nicholas last is because a lot of guilds tanks, let's be real, kind of struggle with doing tank stuff like kiting or just living in general. And tank, both tanking this last ad for a long time and kiting it, just, you can argue whether you think it should be this way or not, it kills the shit out of people, okay? People die a lot to kiting and tanking this ad. So, what you can do now with gear, and I would suggest you doing if you don't think you're tank, I mean, honestly, I would honest, I would recommend killing the first ad anyway. Because a lot of times you'll be like doing too much damage where you'll push them too fast, especially if you hold two minutes. When this tank comes in, this tank ad comes in, just have like half your raid swap to it. Or... People that have really bad target swapping or something swap to it or do really good cleave and can just cleave off of it. You just want it dead in a little bit so they don't have to use too many CDs. Uh, and and here's why, right? We killed it on this pull. All right, we're going to get recital here. The first ad's already dead. And the general strat everyone uses, which I'm just going to go ahead and assume, is you You guys see this Castellan's cadre or whatever in 13 seconds that spawns the second ad? You want that to go off because if the cast starts or it finishes, it's either going to juice the cast like you're going to see in this video. Again, you don't need to juice it. Spawning the ad is perfectly fine because you get to kill it in the intermission. Do not push before this cast. If you're doing it in farm and you're just ripping the boss and killing it fast, it doesn't matter. But like here, so we actually get lucky. We have this attendant uh, and we actually almost pushed it too fast because you want it to cast, right? So I'm sitting here screaming, stop DPS, stop DPS, stop DPS. And he barely gets the cast off. We got a dancing fever for it, but that's worth it. Okay, we can just slowly jump it in the intermission. And you'll, you'll, I'll play this VOD later and you can like hear me call it on how to like jump it singularly in this phase, right? So we cast it, but it never goes off. So we actually, that ad never spawns. But again, it's not really relevant. Uh, here, I'll actually Eric, just play this so you can listen. Fearful, off heal if you can. Trill. Did you spirit shell that so you won't have it out again? I have it out, so. Okay, good. That, fear, 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 fearful, that. fearful. Yeah, I think so. Oh, I think the ad did get, yeah, yeah. Actually, I don't know how that mechanic yes. works. Yeah, it happened like last week, I think. Oh, okay, so we, we just slowly jumped in the intermission and it's like just fine, right? Yeah, that's fine. So just just to know you can do that. And then and then also, if, what if, we, what, if, it, if it spawns, yeah, we're oh, going to... Sorry, let me mute it. Sorry. After this, a lot of people kite this next ad, which is fine too, but I promise you, if you wipe two times to this ad killing your tank and he's unable to kite it from 25 to zero or however much it is, just fucking kill the next ad too. I promise you... There's nothing more tilting than a tank wipe when everyone's doing it right. And again, the tank job isn't necessarily easy, but like, you know, you will ruin your group's uh, like morale and everything. If you just keep everyone gets to the super long last phase, then you have the last like, you know, 20. We're really low here because our group's really geared. But like, let's say you spawn this ad at 25, 30 percent. You have to kite that thing for a decent amount of time, right? So it's much better to just kill it if it's killing your tank. You can still kill this boss. The only difference is you have to deal with these next dancing fevers. Um, but in my opinion, 
that's not that's not a huge issue dealing with the uh, dealing with the dancing fevers. So because you usually have CDs up and there's nothing else going on. So that's that's all the individual stuff about the fight. And I, I'm gonna run through the fight just full with you one time, not this vod, but a different one. And I'm going to just kind of run through the fight one by one, and then I'll uh, paste in a alternate strategy difference thing that I went through the other day on stream for the other fight. So all right, I'll I'll do our our rat raid. I think our rat raid does the boss. We'll just do that fight. I don't know what happens here. This is actually the third group we've killed Stone Legion Generals with. It was the last raid we did on Tuesday. It is a rat group, and we will watch this full to zero, and I'll kind of just go over all the things so you can see it in real time. So I don't know if we have any of our druids. I think I think one of our druid does do the first thing on Dutiful Attendant. Yep, Sang is going back, so Sang should kill it. Uh, first Dancing Fever, I never... So I'm going to focus here. Okay. Thank you for the tier three, little Tommy Tucker. Dude, I got to mute that for now. Darn it. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> thank you for the tier three. You just made it into a YouTube video. Uh, we have... For the first Dancing Fever, I use nothing but an AMZ ever. It never needs more than that. Spirit Shell on AMZ is fine. If you don't have Spirit Shell, AMZ alone, again, is just fine. You don't have to jump them as fast as we did, but uh, but that was uh, that is generally how that's done. First Dutiful Attendant, we did the thing earlier we talked about. Dark Recital, again, the first part of this fight is pretty easy. It's just like a little bit of a damage check. Again, healers can damage a lot here. This is one of the shortest phases in the fight. The two shortest phases are this one 100 to 50 before the first dance and then after the third dance killing the last boss 50 to zero are the two like shortest part of the fights because it's only 50 percent before a dance and it's a haste buff for the later one too but on the pull it's like kind of a buff because you have all your cds right so it's generally pretty fast uh, we push before the attendant if you push after this attendant that's fine i would recommend not killing it if you get it and pushing Frida and then killing the attendant right after. It's not ideal, but it's way better than having to deal with that recital. The reason why is because after this, and I'll kind of skip ahead. I don't need to talk about the dance. You just do it. I will say, fun fact, though, one of our officers of our guild blurted out in the middle of council reclear last week. I kid you not. He said, wait, did you guys realize that there's squares on the ground? And somehow we get world first. So end of the dance. We come back in. If you guys end up killing that last uh, dutiful attendant before the phase, you will have this recital up in like four seconds, and it's much, much harder to deal with these dancing fevers before recital. I don't know if we deal with it in this poll, but I just want to go over. This is obviously just an AMZ, nothing else uh, for this first dancing fever coming out of the phase. Uh, and uh, so yeah, so dark, it was all done before dark recital. If you have dark recital at the same time as fever, have one person who does not have recital jump theirs to make use of the spirit shell before it times out. And then have people jump after it and place your CDs after it. It's kind of shitty to delay the stuff, but it has to happen. Uh, just because doing doing the jumps during it is bad. If you And if you jump, if you're doing Dancing Fevers right before Dark Recital, don't ask why, but people will keep jumping when it comes out and just die to standing in it. So I really recommend doing it after if it's ever close. Uh, this Attendant is the other one in the fight. If you want to, a lot of Moonkins correctly for damage save their Convoke as a three-minute cooldown for double on use and just for general using it during CA, right? Um, what you can do is save your second Convoke, use it at the 2 minute 17 marker, and use it on this Attendant just like you do on the pull. It's better for the fight because when you use it at the 3 minute marker with your CA again, which is what you would do in like a 5 minute sim scenario, it's going to be going between two bosses that, you know, you don't know. It's it's a really bad cooldown. So it actually is better to use your second Convoke on the 2 minute marker here on this Attendant. Again, small buff to, to, your, to your group, but uh, that is a better use of it there. Second time it's up. I wouldn't recommend doing it for attendance for the entire rest of the fight, though, because, yeah, it's just not really helpful. We don't do it here, but yeah. Okay, so here's an, here's an example. So we have Dark Recital and Dancing Fever. I don't know if I call it in this, because, again, I haven't really watched this, but I probably tell one person to jump uh, that doesn't have Recital, so Trill jumped his before the Recital was over, so exactly right. Then after that, you would drop on this one. I prefer to do Barrier and AMZ. You can do more than two cooldowns here. Um, for example, I could use... They, they would all be up in time. I could use Dryney Spirit Link, and I could use one other thing here instead of saving it for the next one. Again, except for the beginning and the end of the fight, you need to plan for having CDs for every Dancing Fever, right? The second and third one of the phase are usually with high oppressive atmosphere and usually with waiters killing you. So that's where you want to have heavier cooldowns, and it's why you only use AMZ on the first one. I always, this for whatever reason, the second one of every phase, I just love using AMZ and Barrier. I think it's, think it's enough to pretty quickly jump them without overusing it. Again, because I have two Spirit Links, I could have used one here, knowing Drynies will be up for the next one. I always choose not to, and the reason why 
is you can still kill this boss with casts going off, and using a Spirit Link there would have been effectively worthless. Again, a lot of people think to just get it on cooldown. Now, if you're doing this and it's easier for you as a raid leader to just say, hey guys, use it on these CDs and not think about it, that's totally fine, I get it. But I'm just telling you, if, you, if you're doing it completely optimally on this fight, you kind of YOLO CDs a bit because sometimes you're really healthy and sometimes you're not. Notice here how we go to the middle as well, because the dancing, see how that let us group up on these waiters? That's kind of what I was talking about earlier, where even if you don't have grips, you can still kill it in time. And you see how our tank here is kiting the attendant, or started to? He's already lower because he had to run a little bit farther, and he moved him out for that like half second. Dancing Fever is going to happen here again. This one I, I choose because you're going to have them up during the hardest part of the fight. I actually prefer to use a ton of cooldowns here. I don't know what I use, but I'm going to guess. I call for Teach these AMZ, one Spirit Link. Uh, Nick's Devo and Bertle's Rally, although I might have held Bertle's Rally in case we missed a kick. Again, I haven't pre-watched this. They they come out, teach the AMZ, Nick Devo, Drini Spirit Linked, Bertle Rally, exactly. So I use a lot there and I jump them all instantly with all those CDs so we can get a clean push into the phase and focus on waiters. Summon dutiful attendant here oh we beat that okay so interesting here uh we actually got one of the worst timings you can get which is the recital is going to happen like basically right as the phase starts which is really really awkward for uh for healing but not too bad someone in chat says i was a healing officer in a pretty low rank guild Healers get real salty if you hold their CDs because it hurts their overall HPS, the life of casual guilds. Uh, well, I'm talking about damage reduction CDs, which won't even show up on logs, even though they should, because it is literally like just as valuable as healing. But uh, yeah, I mean, if you're in a situation like that, what can you do, you know? Have them rip it on cooldown. It'll be a little worse, but fuck it. Sometimes you just make, make do with what you can get. It's just fine. Okay, so the Dark Recital here is going to happen almost instantly, so you want to instantly stack, right? It's going to cast, like, right now, right after the Attendant. So you kill an Attendant during Dark Recital here. I wonder if he kites it. He probably doesn't, just because Dark Recital is happening. Yeah, it's the correct move. Then you get a Waltz of Blood during it. This is, like, so many mechanics, right? So we wait until after all this is over to jump. <laughs> it's like one of the... Pushing not at this time is definitely preferred, but it's obviously doable. So that's the point in the fight where if I have to, again, THD is Venthyr, so we don't have two A-bombs limbs. If you have two DKs, my preference is that you use one A-bombs limb off of cooldown on two minute and actually save the other one for the burn uh, during Lust. Don't use it right away. You wait until ad spawn. I'll kind of tell you the other timing. And it's so you can get two grips of ads. Uh, again, you don't lose a use of A-bombs limb. So uh, I'm getting it on uh, cooldown later. Spreading them out is just good just for general ad cleaving. If you have one DK, obviously rip it on cooldown. Uh, dutiful attendant here. This is a... Uh, okay, so there is another strat to this, and it's kind of a slower strat, and if you're having trouble with the burn, you can try it. We don't do it in this group, I don't think. Um, but what it does, it involves killing the next dutiful attendant. It's in 30 seconds if your damage is much lower than ours. You kill the dutiful attendant, then you go in clean, and you have, like, no dutiful attendant forever. So you can, like burn the boss so low. In fact, every time we've done it, even on accident with like people having deaths, it's almost like too fast. So I don't know if I'd recommend it because you also get an extra wave of uh, of servants. So we just got a servant to spawn and now we're getting another set as well. Right there, we use barrier and AMZ. Again, that's the second one. Now for the next one, we can just rip it again, right? So the next dancing fever we get, we can do Nyx, Devo, Driny, Spirit Link. We could, and again, we could have had maybe Spirit Link that one. We would have had the same amount of uses in a fight. It's just... I would much rather have maybe Spirit Link in, some, in case someone misses a kick. We can get two mass dispels. Um, oh, shit. There's also a weird timing in this fight. It didn't happen there, but sometimes when the ad knocks you back, notice we kill the ads now. We don't even kite them anymore. Sometimes we just, like, cleave them. Like, we don't even target them. But I think with alt, with alt tanks, like DKs and stuff like that, we usually just kill them. Stack for recital here. <laughs> Again, I would recommend holding all of your two in three minutes for the beginning of this phase. It's really the hardest part of the fight. Everything before this, you can honestly, like, in one pull, you can get to this point in the fight. This is Dancing Fever again. This is, like, all those CDs. And you can just rip them. Again, we have really clean waiters here. If you if you have a bunch of waiters out right here, you want to jump these next ones really slow because it can be, like, really dangerous. 
So here, notice this wasn't as clean as the last example I gave. We sp that ad finished at 55%. It's fine if the ad if the ad casts. Just if you have a tank, ask him to bring it to the middle of the room like our tank does, uh, just so everyone in the room or to the best of their ability will be able to hit it. I never determined if this was a bug that this happened, but it's how I knew everyone ended up killing it. So uh, I've always found that pretty funny. And then after this, it's pretty simple. If you use your two minutes at the beginning of the phase, they come up like 30 seconds, 40 seconds into this phase, I think. Uh, and you can use it for like the end of the fight to burn. Yeah, the ads stay during the intermission. And it, and it, and it gets rid and it like pushes the spawn back of the next one too, obviously, since the cast goes on CD. You can also have the ad never spawn, which I showed earlier. Okay, so stacking up for recital here. So you, again, you don't want to jump these until after. I probably call one person to jump. Looks like it's Eric's mage. Just to make use of the, the spirit shell because of when they stack it, it'll actually expire. Uh, if, or like, like a couple seconds from now, usually. Okay, so they're kiting the attendant. If you like move back and forth a little bit, it like it just messes up its, its vibe. We spawn the third ad. So we spawn the third ad at 25%. If your guild is behind, I would say, again, it depends on your trust in your tank. You can kite this ad forever. And I could maybe have a link in the description of this video that uh, shows you a VOD of Darky kiting it on Monk, which I think is really repeatable and probably is pretty... I mean, he was YOLOing it, but it's probably as good as it'll be. Uh, but, if again, if you're, if you're wiping multiple times in a row to your tank kiting, just stop wiping to that and kill it. You can still kill the boss. So we spawned it at like 22%, right? Uh... At this point, I would definitely kite it because it's the boss is so low, but some guilds will get this cast like 30 or 35 percent. If that happens, fucking kill the ad. I promise you a pug tank is going to wipe to kiting that ad from 35 to zero uh, like 80 percent of the time. So just don't put yourself in that position. And then you kill it. Easy. Oh, another thing I forgot to mention about waiters. You guys can stun them, especially during dancing fever jumps. Helps a shitload. You can just actually stun the raid damage they do. Oh, and then the weird timing I was talking about, it didn't happen here, but it depends on when you push the boss. Um, there's a timing where you get knocked back from the ad Oh, dude, it happened off stream when I was working with uh, with Slightly Tilted, so I don't have a VOD of it. I know it's happened to us before, where you get knocked back. See, right here we get knocked back, and then it does Dark Recital. You can have Dark Recital be cast on you, and it go off literally right now as you get knocked back. Three, two, one, Dark Recital's out. All you do here is, again, you just do anything to live. Literally don't worry about your damage at all. Pop every personal. Obviously, try to get with your partner, but just like run towards the boss slowly and stutter step and try to get with your partner and heal through it. That's the only thing you can do. A lot of people wiped that. We have killed it. In fact, Slightly Tilted's last kill, I believe, did have uh, did have that happen and they got through it with no deaths, but it's just really, really rough. Just it, And again, you may see it, you may never see it and you may see it all the time. It just totally depends on your guild's like actual damage, right? Okay, so I think that's it. Uh, anything, any, Chad, do you think, this is why I did this on, on stream. I want to, before I give any final things to it, I want to know if you guys think there's anything you still want to ask about this fight, or if there's anything I missed or I like, could have done better. Is the overlap a case of low damage? Honestly, I don't know. I assume so. We never see it in our main raid and we see it in our alt raids. So just by that, it's probably, yeah. Isn't it easier if you go free to last? I don't think it's easier. Uh, I, I've shown that in the thing here. I'll explain why too. I, I, here, remember kind of what I, here, I, I have it up. So. Let me, let me show you the last phase of Frida, another strat. And, and before I show you this, to my knowledge, no one has done Stavros last. It was both our and Echo's original idea to do uh, to do the Stavros last, just like we did on Heroic. It's actually the worst Heroic strat to do Stavros last, although it doesn't matter because like it's really easy. But on Mythic, we did it sub 210 eye level for World First, right? We killed every boss except for the last three in the first day, sub 210 eye level. So because of that, killing Stavros last was almost impossible. But honestly, I don't know if anyone will try it, but if you try to do Stavros last, it might honestly not be that bad. Like, if you have all of your cooldowns up for the first one, and then you, like, lust the second one, or vice versa, like, I think you could probably kill both and probably maybe be easier than both of these phases. But if you guys want to see a VOD here of why I don't think that... Again, I went over this the other day on stream, but I guess I'll just 
briefly touch on it now. I have seen some people do free to last. I don't think it's easier at all, even remotely. The only argument I could see people wanting to do this, even the, the guild who did this first, which is, uh, I think, Storm Rage Alliance Sig Kill, um, they did this first. He said he mainly did it for the memes. Like, the only argument for doing free to last is to make it easier on your tanks, which is certainly true. Uh, they just need to have big CDs for Stone Spike. Um, but it makes it so much harder for everyone else in the raid. Rather than being stacked, everyone has to like spread and quickly move to stuff. I'll quickly go through the last phase of this fight and show you why I think it's worse. I, it's it's like the simple concept of why why some strats are easier than others. The Nicholas strat puts literally all of the emphasis on your tanks and healers. Your healers to heal through the waiters that are up and the dancing fevers and your raid leader and the tanks have to deal with the ad, okay? But like I said before with the other strat, if you kill the ad, it's fine, okay? And you can still make every check and it's not hard to tank anymore. Look what this look what this fight does to... Uh, I'll skip ahead. I'll just show you the last phase. There's two eruptions before the last phase, but honestly, before the last phase, it's not too much different. But look at this, okay? So th this first part isn't hard. Just to give you an idea of what goes on initially, she's going to do a drain essence in three seconds. All that has to happen here is three players need to sidestep their puddles on the ground. Keep in mind, every damage that she does to you in this phase stuns a puddle, not other things like after image darker recital doesn't spawn stuff. Okay, and then it's going to do volley, and then it's going to do an eruption, okay? Eruption's not too bad. Uh, they have to kill a dutiful attendant during it. And there's less dutiful attendance, right? Because it's not Nicholas last. You spread for the eruption. Doesn't hit very hard, especially with it being spirit shelled like that. Okay. You kill the attendant. You move the boss forward. They have to do one more thing. They're going to draw. Now, soul spikes is going to happen. Since this is going to tick damage on the raid, you're going to see them all sidestep. They're all going to sidestep the like incoming damage and the puddles that they create. And then they're going to move to orange for dark recital. Okay. That's the play here. So they're going to soul spike. Tanks use huge CD, so it doesn't do a lot of damage. The damage isn't as relevant as the space problem. And then Dark Recital cast instantly. So in this, this is why I think the fight is harder. This lineup is harder than everything you have to do in any other strat, okay? You stack up for Recital here. As soon as the last thing is over, everyone goes to orange. Dancing Fever goes out at the same time, which you can't jump yet, okay? People do Dark Recital with almost zero time to get there, although obviously with practice, you can do it. Uh, and then you drop two minute cooldowns. They just wild spirited. They drop barrier and they start jumping things as you're getting destroyed with another drain essence spawning puddles in the group, right? You have now 10 seconds with all your CDs to jump these, which again, very doable. Uh, and you beat the next one, right? Now, they're going to wipe right here to this prideful eruption, but they beat it. You have to beat this every time. So now there's like this hard damage check, which basically doesn't exist before where you have to beat this eruption cast. If this happens here, they wipe, but they just barely beat it. It doesn't go off. Okay, now they do the dance and they repeat it. And after that, it's basically the same thing with a haste buff. It's a little easier, right? So here you don't have to deal with waiters or the tank ads. But like I said, the tank ads are kind of a non-issue. Here they just repeat it, right? They do They do this. They immediately stack for recital right after they get grouped up. Recital immediately. Like, look, how, look at the tight timing. You know what I mean? Like, it's just messy. Uh, and then you have 10 seconds after this with a drain essence happening to do another set of essences, right? Or another set of dancing fever jumps. This fight, the other fight puts makes the fight a joke for 14 people and really hard for 6 people, your tanks and healers. Or 7 people. This strat makes it hard for everyone on the raid just to make it easier on your tanks when you can just already make it easier on your tanks by just killing the adds. That's why I think this strat is worse. Again, uh, it's certainly fine. Like I said, it's doable. Uh, I would just never recommend someone to do this for their first kill. Again, you can. It's just, I, I just, every every bit of logic tells you that the other strat is better better to complete in a shorter amount of time. For the waltz, is there a safest spot for the raid? Uh, going back to our other video, kind of no. There's not a there's not a safe spot for the waltz. You want to like generally just stay. There's a reason that we stay like pretty close to the front here, and there's only two options, right? We're just gonna go forward or back, and we just it's just a judgment call. Let me back it up a little bit. Okay, so Stavros is at is out. He just spawned this. He just spawned this shit. So Darker Sidle's over. It always spawns at the end of one of the Darker Sidles, right? And then we see there to our right. It's like okay, we don't need to move, so we stay here. We just stay right here, I guess, on the third square up or second square from the little peak there. Uh, and generally speaking, it's either a very clear we go forward or to the right or left, or we have to hard yeet to the middle if it spawns on us, and it's it's not hard to see. Why is not killing Stavros last viable mythic? Okay, I'm not saying it's not. I'm not saying it's not. You have to understand that a lot of times when we do different strats, like we don't beat the infusers on Sun King because it's just an easy one-shot boss doing our old strat and it just doesn't matter, right? We're killing it for the first time. Doing the beating infuser strat is fine. Uh, we always just like stick to what we do because like why would we change it, right? Um, and when we did this on progression, you have to keep in mind, you guys are pulling this boss at 215, 220 eye level. We killed this boss sub 210. 
uh, it was not feasible to kill Stav or Nick or yeah Stavros last. Now people have since gotten a lot of gear, including us. So it's possible now that it is the best strat because with the amount of gear you have, you can just beat it. I don't know. I haven't tried it. I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying it was bad because we had no gear and the damage check was r way too tight. I don't know if that's still true. So uh, someone can try it. Dude, if you try it, fucking lick me a lot of it. I'm fascinated to know if it's good or not, uh, but I'm not sure. I wouldn't recommend it because I haven't seen anyone do it.